Hi everyone, my name is Elizabeth Frost. I work as the technical specialist for honeybees within the New South Wales Department of Primary Industries. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today on the 41st annual Tokal Beekeepers Field Day, longest running beekeeping field day in Australia. Um, it's a brave new world and we're happy to have you with us in it. So today I'll be presenting to you on the topic of long live the queen, um, in our case, it may only be one, two, or three years uh, life for a queen honeybee. And we'll be talking about some uh, facts, some myths, some stats, as in statistics, and some ideas about the future of uh, recording information about your queen bee. So the photos we're looking at now, on the left-hand side, you've got uh, adult queen bee. She's got a red marked thorax, which the beekeeper has marked um, so that she's easier to find down the track and so that they know exactly what age she is and some information on her origins. You see there's worker attendants surrounding her, um, attending to her needs, so feeding, grooming, um, and making sure she's on her merry way, laying eggs throughout the colony, brood nest. On the right we've got our long lived the queen title popping out of a um, queen cell, so that's a cocoon that the queen develops in from the larval stage, uh, undergoing complete metamorphosis to the adult bee stage. To start with a bit of statistics, in New South Wales, the state of New South Wales, there are 367,280 registered hives, and that means there's just as many queen bees registered in New South Wales. So she's the engine room essentially of our hive, each one of our hives. And she produces all the individuals within the hive, uh, which uh, through collective effort, create honey, harvest propolis or plant resins, uh, pollen for their protein, uh, amino acids, fatty acids, mineral and vitamin needs, and a number of other tasks. There's a few myths out there, and popular media uh, loves to spread them about honeybees. So as we uh, continue on our learning journey about our beehives and our bees, we learn that some things aren't always correct. So in this um, Justice League of America comic book, we've got um, the queen of the universe saying, all the Justice League are the drones of the queen bee. So in this case, um, the drones aren't doing anybody's bidding, but their own in terms of uh, spreading their genes throughout the environment uh, through mating with virgin queens. So the reality is we've got, we've got three casts within the hive, the worker on the left, the drone in the middle, the only male in the hive, and the queen bee on the right. So typically we have one queen bee in the colony. There's situations where there may be two, say there's uh, swarming behavior kicking in, or the queen's getting old, and so she uh, lays some eggs in queen cell cups, and her worker progeny or daughters raise replacement queens for her. The drones are seasonal. Uh, however, Australia has such a long uh, and mild production season in some areas, most areas, in fact, that some drones will overwinter uh, through the winter months. So who is this queen really? She's the mother of all the bees in the hive, um, you know, tens of thousands of workers during the hive height of the season, a few uh, hundred, or sorry, a few thousands of drones, potentially, uh, given the seasonal condition and the age of the queen, and she's the only fully developed uh, reproductive female in the colony. So she and the workers are both from fertilized eggs. However, it's solely the larval diet uh, that determines whether this female uh, larvae will develop into a worker bee or into a queen bee. And they both have really specialized uh, organs that develop through these different development pathways. So whereas the queen bee, obviously she's fully reproductive, laying all the eggs in the colony, uh, whereas a worker has specialized uh, organs uh, for foraging, for wax production, um, for stinging, uh, in the case of the workers with a barbed sting, whereas the queen has a smooth sting and can sting multiple times. Back to the queen though, she also influences colony behavior. So some people think the queen controls everything, but it's a really, um, har I guess a 
a relationship in harmony. Ideally, when the queen is producing these chemical odors, so they have their different languages in the hive. The queen has a chemical odor language through production of pheromones, which uh, indicate to the worker progeny that she's alive, she's well, she's present in the colony and productive in the colony. And workers in turn through grooming the bee or the queen bee, they spread this pheromone throughout the colony, indicating to their sisters that she's alive, well, and present in the colony. So she may live one to three seasons, and that depends uh, a lot on uh, how much, I guess, she's allowed to lay, how much um, work the colony goes through in the season, does it stay in one static location, does it get moved around. Um, whether it's moved around or in a static location really has a lot to do with the nutrition available at both sites. So uh, in both instances, we may have situations where we need to decide is this site still suitable for my hive? Does it have enough uh, nutrition to access itself? Do I need to supplemental feed or move it to greener pastures per se? That is areas with more prolific flowering events. The queen fax, she can lay uh, her own weight in eggs in a single day. So she can be a prolific egg layer um, and she's busiest uh, laying spring through autumn in Australia. We've got, again, a very long uh, season compared to where uh, the strains of bees that we typically like to keep in Australia originate. So Europe um, through Western Europe and the bees original ranges through Western Asia, Middle East and Africa as well. So within the hive, um, some people say she's got it pretty good. She's groomed, she's fed, uh, they even remove her feces out of the hive, but really she's got an incredibly important job to do. So those workers want her um, within the hive and producing eggs to maintain that hive production and all the different jobs that go on in the hive. Um, hive hygiene, undertaking of uh, dead or diseased bees, wax production and comb construction, and obviously honey production and pollen uh, ripening into bee bread. Be remiss not to mention the boys. So the drones, you can see in the top, top image, we've got two drones from two different colonies, one Italian type and one Carniola and Caucasian uh, black type of drone. So they're really a critical component in queen quality. She may made up to, uh, with 28 drones, recent studies have shown out of Sydney Uni, and the average drones that she mates with is 12 on her mating flight. So timing is everything for the queen breeder. You have to, once queen cells are ripe, put them out, you know, rain, hail, or shine, because queen emergence waits for no one. The queen is, uh, and this organism in general, is really fascinating from its reproductive strategy that's evolved uh, over time. So this is a, a system called uh, haplodiploidy. So that is where the queen uh, lays fertilized eggs to produce females or unfertilized eggs to produce males, the drones. And more down to the basic field skills, how do we find her? She's the most important individual in the hive uh, in most instances. And there's a few key steps for success. So if you're wearing specs, make sure you bring them. Pick a nice day. So don't pick one that's got high wind or chance of rain where bees are gonna be um, not too happy to see you. You wanna treat the colony as nice as possible. So gentle movements, not banging boxes or lids around, using nice cool smoke, not hot smoke. You wanna keep the bees calm while you're looking for the queen so that it's easier um, to observe her walking as you normally would across the combs. So in this photo, my colleague Madeline Kratz is showing, holding up the frame, and she's got the sun coming over her shoulder so that it's, um, you know, at a nice angle also to see eggs in the bottom of the cell. So if we see eggs, we can be quite sure that there is a queen uh, in the colony that day or at least the two days prior because an egg is an egg for three days from laying. So I like to hold up the frame with the sun over my shoulder and I'm scanning the frame looking across for that um, key shape for a queen bee. And when in doubt, you've looked at all the frames on both sides, 
don't be afraid to look at the inside of the box or above the clearance cooler. You might have a little bit of a bend between the tines that she's just squeezed through in her efforts to expand her brood nest. Record keeping is a key thing that we do uh, within the National Honeybee Genetic Improvement Program. So with all livestock species, uh, there are different traits that you can uh, select for, maintain, and maybe even increase, such as honey production, uh, temperament, and certain disease traits. So with the queen breeding program, we'll be collecting as much data as we can that's valuable in uh, increasing or at least maintaining certain traits, such as honey production and different brood nest traits and health traits, as well as pollination traits. So we've got some better bees, WA members uh, on the top right, and we've got a recorder beekeeper in North Dakota on the top left, just to indicate the tools you might choose to record in the field. So when we're taking our uh, data, we want to make sure we know the queens are those breeders that we've put in. So I'll just um, switch the screen to a few queen videos here so that we can have a look at the benefits for marking queens uh, and maybe strategies for how to look for queens. So with this video, we've got uh, Better Bees BUA Queen, Western, Australian, Western Australia's longest running, and actually Australia's longest running breeding program. So this Italian queen is marked with yellow. She's going about uh, her business looking and measuring cells in the colony to see if which one is clean enough and suitable for her to lay a fertilized worker egg in. And you can see the workers are following her around. They're antenating, so they're, you know, they're checking her out with their antennae, which are uh, scent, scent uh, detection organs. And she's going along her merry way to look for where to lay eggs. You get uh, a little bit more of an active or potentially agitated queen it might be trickier to find her. So in this case, we've also got a marked queen and sometimes they really hightail it away from you and away from the sun. So this one, um, you'll see shortly, she's trying her best to get out of the sun and move to the other side of the frame. So she is uh, what we might consider a runner, but if you have a keen eye and you're kind of scanning that frame, you should be able to catch her abdomen because it's much different looking than the workers, whether she's a Italian, golden Italian queen, or a redhead cordovan, or a black carniolan, or a Caucasian bee. And our last example, once you've got your eye in, you can look at a frame and you can think, okay, well, I won't get distracted by this, this patch of uh, adorable honey slurping worker bees. And I can see, dang, there's the queen, she's got the green dot. Um, I've seen her, I know she's active and still present in the colony, and I'll go about uh, collecting the data that I've set out um, to collect. So back to the apiary site where we're collecting this data, we want all of our breeders in the one apiary site, so we know that there's a control here. So we know they're all foraging within that two kilometer or more radius. We know the species mix, the rainfall of the area from historic weather data, and that they're all kind of under the same conditions for testing. So this data sheet is a bit of a catch-all one. We wouldn't expect most beekeepers to collect all this information, but it's just a suggestion to start getting you thinking about uh, what are the traits in my colonies? What can I measure? Uh, what would be a good thing to measure in addition to my, you know, twice annual mandatory uh, pest and disease check in my hives. If you want more information about that data sheet and other outputs from the queen breeding program, you're most welcome to look at our website on AgriFeatures. We've got a team made of Department of Primary Industries, Sydney Uni, uh, University of New England, the Animal Genetics and Breeding Unit there, Better Bees WA, non-for-profit Wean Bee Foundation and our manager AgriFutures for this uh, federal government funded grant. And we're also partnering with Horticulture Industries and Beekeeping Industries such as Seagull. 
you can follow us as well. We've got uh, social media pages through Extension Oz Professional Beekeepers, and you can find us on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. So please get in touch. And thank you so much for listening. Um, just remember, uh, queen bees need healthy trees too, so she needs good nutrition to support all that egg laying and um, egg production. So think about the landscape in your areas. Could it, could it use more native trees? And how could you be a better advocate for native uh, nectar producing flora? Thanks so much for listening.